you know, I'm not gonna lie, there are some days where I think maybe I should just shave my beard off and just have a mustache, but I really don't think it would look very good. Em, come here. Do you think I'd look good if I just had a mustache? No. <laughs> Why not? It would be creepy, like a walrus. Thanks. <laughs> okay, well, with that said, welcome back everybody. My name is Tucker, and in today's video, we're talking about the Portland Trailblazers. Now, I know that technically their season is not over, but they are down 3-1 in the first round to the number one seeded LA Lakers, and Damian Lillard has left the bubble. So I feel like it's safe, I don't think it's disrespectful at all, to go ahead and talk about kind of what's next for this team and what they could potentially do this off season. But really quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload Hold on one second, I got y'all. Basically every single day, and leaving a like rating is also a great way to let me know that not only are you enjoying the content, but also it helps out the video a ton as well. With that said, let's go and get started. Okay, so this was certainly an interesting season for Portland. Coming into the year, we didn't really know what to expect from them. They made some roster changes. They brought in Hassan Whiteside because they were gonna be waiting for Yusuf Nurkic to return from injury. But of course they have talent on the roster. Damian Lillard, TJ McCollum, Rodney Hood was gonna be healthy. Zach Collins was gonna be there. Nurkic will come back at some point during the season and then Whiteside would be there as well. And as good as Dame and CJ are together, you figure this is at the very least gonna be a playoff team. Well, unfortunately, they got hit really hard with the injury bug. And unfortunately, they just weren't able to have the season that they wanted to prior to the bubble. And they were able to put together some really great games in the bubble to get themselves into the postseason. But ultimately, that just resulted in what is gonna probably be one win in their first round playoff series against the Lakers. Now, as we look at kind of what is next for this team going into this off season, I don't think that they're gonna be evaluating the head coaching position. I think that Terry Stotts is a good coach and generally year after year, especially offensively, he maximizes the talent of the players and there's guys that continue to develop and get better every single year. So I don't really think that they're evaluating that position quite yet. As we get into the free agency numbers and the cap space stuff, they're not really losing anybody significant this offseason with the exception of Hassan Whiteside and then Carmelo Anthony's deal is expiring as well. Other than that, I mean, like Wenyan Gabriel will need a new deal, but apart from those two guys, which if they wanna bring them back, I wouldn't be surprised, but if they don't, I wouldn't be surprised either. They pretty much are getting their entire team back next year because Whiteside was always there to just kind of hold down the fort until Yusuf Nurkic got back and you saw his role really decrease once Nurkic was healthy and back playing uh, at full strength. The problem for this team though is that even though they can bring back all their players, they don't have a ton of ability to make some changes, at least in free agency. They'll have a couple of million dollars in cap space, assuming they don't bring back either Whiteside or Anthony or Gabriel. And the only other thing they can do to create that space is either make some trades or they can buy out Trevor Ariza's contract and open up about 11 million more dollars in cap space, which would put them right around 15 million if they don't bring back anybody else on the roster, which is enough to do something. But in this free agency class, I'm not sure that there are really a lot of really good solutions for this Trailblazers team with that number and more than likely they will try and maybe bring back Anthony not buy out Ariza's contract and then go from there because they are so deprived with wing depth that they really can't afford to lose especially Ariza and then Anthony as well who had some nice moments in the bubble now the interesting thing about this team is they do have plenty of good pieces when you look up and down the roster Dame CJ Nurkic who I think looked really fatigued at times and obviously was dealing with some personal stuff uh, when the playoffs had just started uh, but he was obviously fatigued at times in the bubble and having the, such a long layoff from the injury and things like that it's not necessarily surprising but he is a really really good player when he is in shape and when he is fully engaged Yusuf Nurkic is a legitimate part of a big three there in Portland he can pass the ball he has post moves he showed a shooting touch a little bit in the bubble as well when fully healthy Yusuf Nurkic is a huge difference maker for this team and then outside of that if Rodney Hood can be healthy that's big Trevor Ariza can still guard and shoot a little bit Anthony Simons Gary Trent uh, Zach Collins, and then of course Mello as well that I already mentioned. So there's a core of a team here uh, that actually looks like it can do some things moving forward. And if every single one of those players is healthy, it's not unrealistic to expect like a top six finish from a team with this level of talent on the roster. Now, I'm sure many of you that clicked on this video are thinking, okay, well, what are some potential big changes for this group? Maybe Dame or CJ ends up getting traded. And this has been a, a topic of conversation for, I'd say at least two years. I think if you go back two years, I have a CJ McCollum trade machine, uh, one of the first of many, I believe. Um, but if they haven't made the move at this point, I don't think that they're really going to 
at least not for a while, at least not until those guys are on the tail end of their contracts. They're both signed long-term. I don't see them splitting up that combination. It works well for what they want to do. The city loves both of those players, and I just I just don't see them moving on from either of those guys. And I felt like really their big move this year would have potentially been moving that big expiring contract of Hassan Whiteside in exchange for some kind of third guy and the guy that kept coming up was Kevin Love. They didn't end up making that move. So if you're looking at a potential big one, I felt like that was the one. They didn't do it. And now we get into the off season and they, their options for making a significant roster change are pretty limited. Now, as far as other trades, maybe not huge ones, but smaller ones, they do have some interesting young pieces on the roster. Collins, Gary Trent, uh, Anthony Simons, Nazir Little, who was a first round pick last year. The problem is I feel like each of those guys have more value to Portland because they kind of know what they are. They know how to develop them than they do to any other teams around the league. So I don't think there's a ton of value there in trades. And the guy specifically that I want to highlight here is Zach Collins because he was a former top 10 pick in the 2017 draft, picked ahead of guys like Donovan Mitchell, Bam Adebayo, and John Collins. And it just hasn't happened for him to this point. He only played in 11 regular season games this past season and then was hurt once again in the bubble. And if he doesn't stay healthy, he's not going to be on this roster beyond next season. He has one more year left and he's a talented player. He can do some things, um, but he just hasn't put it together yet. And really that's kind of what's held back this Portland roster. Because think about what this group would look like with any of the three guys that I mentioned earlier, Mitchell, Bam, or John Collins as opposed to Zach, uh, all three of those guys would be huge helps to this team and they just don't have that kind of up and coming piece on this roster right now. So like I said, it's pretty easy to convince yourself when you look at this group that if they keep the same coach and they do a lot of the same things they did this year and they stay healthy, a top six finish in the Western Conference is not unrealistic. So my expectation would be that this team is just gonna continue to do what they're doing right now moving forward. Because realistically, there isn't really a path that gets them towards anything better than a top six finish in the Western Conference in the immediate future. Like they could get crazy and try and package everything on the roster other than CJ and Dame and get a third guy. They could put all of their young players, all their draft picks together and try and make something happen. But I just don't think that that's the type of drastic move that this franchise and this organization is going to go for. And so if it was up to me, I would have potentially tried to break up the Dame CJ thing a couple of years ago, probably trade, trade away CJ McCollum and figure out something else there. But since that didn't happen, what I think is going to happen is more of the same. They don't have significant cap space to make changes this offseason. They don't have significant trade assets to really do anything either. And as a result, they're probably going to bring back the same coach and very much the same roster going in to next season. Now, beyond that, once we get to the summer of 2021, I think that's the real evaluation offseason for Portland. They're going to have more cap space because they're really only going to have Dame, CJ, and a couple of other guys under contract. And at that point, they can either re-sign some guys or use their cap space on a significant free agent or potentially look at a rebuild by trading away either CJ or Damian Lillard in that offseason because there will be a lot of teams chasing trades and chasing a potential super team with the amount of free agency movement that we're expecting in that offseason. So that's kind of where I'm at with Portland right now. They're a good team if healthy. They're not going to be championship contenders though. And right now it looks like they're just going to run it back next season same coach same roster then really fully evaluate things in the summer of 2021 so right now i'm not anticipating any kind of big damian lillard or cj mccollum trade i'm not really entertaining the idea of doing a trade machine on those guys either at this point there are other players i'd rather do trade machines on that i think it's more likely that they get moved but that's just kind of where i'm at on portland right now and yeah there you have it that is going to be the end of today's video and i thank you all very much for watching once again my name is tucker if you missed any of my previous videos then be sure to check out the boxes on screen Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.